the summer of 1985 and British football is still feeling shocked and isolated after the tragedy of Heisel. With our club sides about to feel the backlash and expectations never lower, we were about to see one of the most exciting championship races ever. Meanwhile, over in Mexico, the World Cup awaits and Lord God himself is about to lend a hand. Even I don't remember this shambolic slice of mumbling. But Brian Robson's England actually had plenty to be happy about, securing World Cup qualification a year early. Imagine. Liverpool, meanwhile, were facing a tough old time under their new player manager, Kenny Dalglish. Their bid for a fifth European Cup win had ended literally in disaster at the finals at the Hazel Stadium, leaving the players shell-shocked to face the Hazel backlash and probable European isolation. In the end, all English clubs were banned from Europe, but the government wanted more. I wish we could get those responsible, get them before a court and stiff sentences so that they stop anyone else. The league championship had stayed in Liverpool the previous season, but this time at Goodison Park, where Everton's heroic treble bid was thwarted in the cup final. The Blues had snapped up England's latest sensation, Gary Lineker, seen here in unconvincing ordinary bloke mode. But on the pitch, yes, he was a hot potato. Lineker! <laughs> Lineker's arrival wasn't good news for everyone at Goodison, as Andy Gray was about to discover. I just moved house. And I just looked out the window and Howard's jag pulled up. And I turned to my lady at the time and I says, forget unpacking those packing cases. You just know. I really didn't know how to approach it. Um, I wanted to approach it in the nicest possible way. I just turned around and I said, Andy, tell him to stop working. Oh, no, he said. Everton fans were outraged at losing Andy Gray, who had become a talisman for the club's recent revival. Petitions flooded in, but to no avail, the deal was done, and Lineker took his competitive bow for the champions in the charity shield against Brian Robson and his Manchester United Cup winners. A bit elaborate, this is Sheedy, and Stephen! <laughs> and again, and it's a Sheedy this time. Oh, and Heath had a chance, scores! Gary Bailey lost it, and quite a return for Adrian Heath. Now, that charity shield was to be the last TV football action until Christmas. You see, Kitty Winks, there actually was a time when TV and football lived apart, couldn't get along, barely speaking, in fact. The main argument is that the deal that they've negotiated is mad, bad and sad. And that was that. No televised league action and no sign when it might return. This meant that the only Man United fans who saw the team start to the season, 10 straight wins, were the ones who actually go to their games. Tiny percentage. None of the games were shown on television. It was, that was when the dispute was on. And we played some tremendous stuff at times. We played some of the best football I've seen. And for, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's not on record anyway. United's faultless start saw them nine points clear of Liverpool by mid-October, with Chelsea, Newcastle and Everton the best of the rest. Billy Bingham's Northern Ireland arrive in London, looking for a point to secure World Cup qualification. Nice hair, Mr Jennings. Oh, come on, Northern Ireland, we'll support. And Pat Jennings pulled up a save, which could prove important. And deflected, and Jennings saved with his feet. When we cheer you from the stands, so oh, come on. On a night of acute drama at Ninian Park, nothing but a win would do for Wales against Scotland. Mark Hughes put them in front. But a second-half penalty gave the Scots hope of the point they needed to secure a playoff place. Davy Cooper of Rangers stepped up and stuck it home. 
but amid the celebrations, a tragedy struck. The tension proved too much for Scotland's legendary manager, Jock Steen, who suffered a heart attack and shortly afterwards died. Jock Steen's family wanted a private cremation, so instead the people of Glasgow lined the streets as the funeral cortege passed. Thousands of people standing in silent tribute to a Scottish soccer legend. Manager Alex Ferguson takes over from Steen and prepares for a two-leg playoff against Australia. To the Scots, this is just a formality, so they press on and recall their World Cup song. Behind the camera is a ball with the words on. Their confidence is well placed. A 2-0 victory in the home leg proved more than enough. In the league, the Christmas table shows the chasing pack are closing in on Man United, who now lead by just four points. A measly 1.3 million is all it takes to get the football authorities back into bed with the TV people. Graham Kelly was cock a hoop. John Watson can dust off his statistics and Brian Morecam polishes hyperbole. Oh, oh always oh, pleased with that one. So the TV cameras return, and who's this mystery man? Well, yeah, it's Frank McAvenny, isn't it? West Ham's rise to the top of the table owes much to his goal-scoring exploits and to that of his partner, Tony Cotty. They've got 31 goals between them as they travel to Charlton in the FA Cup third round. And a miscue by Humphrey and McAvenny. Can he do it? Looks as though it's going in for Tony Cotty. West Ham score with two minutes to go. Meanwhile, Liverpool take their suddenly fragile away form to Vicarage Road, Watford. And who remembers this peculiar all-white Liverpool strip? This is Jackets, and that's a good try. Greg Johnston. Walsh. Yes. It's a nice day to start again. Craig Johnston's cross. Rush. Yes. Short and here's Walsh. No doubt now. Back on Merseyside, Gary Lineker has finally won the confidence of the Everton fans. A little matter of 19 goals by Christmas did help, as Howard Kendall's team prepare to visit Birmingham City. take Gary Lineker to the top of the First Division goal scorers. Andy Gray, now at Aston Villa, would be crushed if it weren't for his first love. Andy, everybody knows about your scoring goals, but I don't think many people knew that you played the piano so beautifully. Yeah, it's a little secret I mean, Bob. Uh, I've played it for quite a few years now. I've always enjoyed music and been musically inclined, if you like, and uh, 
I was lucky enough up here and sent me to a, a teacher and I learned quite, at quite an early age, but it's something I've always done pretty privately up till now, of course. In fact, it was the 80s that saw the first cultural bonding between football and rock and roll. Yeah, well, that's funny. I used to have a nightclub in the early 80s, 79 to about 84, and we used to have live bands there and little-known bands at the time, like Duran Duran, and, and I remember Dex's Midnight Runners actually got to number one, and we had booked them for about 125 quid for the night. So they were committed to, under contract, to play in our club, and we had them on as a number one band. Billy Joel. Billy Joel was my man. The Pesh Mode I liked a lot. The U2 was the, the big band that I, I followed in a big way. I was in the same class at school as um, Jim Kerr, Charlie Burchill at Simple Minds. So I followed their career, and sometimes I think, why didn't I pick a guitar up all those years ago at Holyrood in Glasgow? I had the Mickey taken out of him many times, and I still have. I'm a big Vera Lynn fan. <laughs> Having started on a musical theme, perhaps you'd like to play us out in the same way? Certainly. Well, this is, this is a little thing that, that I learned at a very early age, and something that's stayed with me for a long time. I don't know about you, but I believed that first time round. <laughs> Manchester United's championship hopes are dented by Brian Robson's latest injury crisis. Robson's rousing style of play threatens to jeopardise not only his life, but his participation for club and country. The latest in a series of minor needles is a pulled hamstring plan for England. So it's off to Amsterdam for a massage. Oh, stop giggling, he's a professional. In many ways, it's more of a psychological thing than a physical thing, although obviously it's, uh, they're both going to be beneficial. Um, he's been here, he's spent more time at the ground than anyone, I would think, apart from the physio. Every time you pop in the treatment room, he's, he's, he's on the bed or he's out here doing uh, lapping and kicking and so forth, and that, that can be boring and gets players down. And I think uh, this will give him a big lift, sending him over there. With Robson away in Holland, United take on Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest at Old Trafford. Oh, and a chance for Walsh, and a goal! <laughs> Forward by Whiteside, and here's Gibson. He found some space there, and Brett Williams brought him down. Penalty! Brett Williams on Colin Gibson. And it's going to be a question of whether Jesper Olsen can take the responsibility here. And he can. Stapleton. Strachan. Good cross and a chance for Olsen! Manchester United take the lead, and Jesper Olsen gets his second goal of the match to mark his return to the first team. Davenport, and that looked as if there might have been an offside there, but the flag isn't up, and Walsh is through, and against the post, and in! Nottingham Forest pull it back to 2-2. Brian Clough off the bench with delight. Played into Webb. Awkward. And Clough was at the far post and it's 3-2. Nigel Clough may have given his father and his team a win bonus here. Defeated by Forrest, United must now go to Anfield, where things turn very ugly indeed. Arriving at the ground, United players are attacked with ammonia. I thought that actually sort of put some sort of paint on there that hadn't dried, you know, it hit you in the eyes and then everybody's coughing and spluttering and it took a little bit of time before we realised that somebody had, had, had sort of used one of those tear gas canisters on us, yeah. Go on, do you want to get some your eyes under there? Colin Gibson, Hughes, and Colin Gibson's through! He's there again, it's a goal! Colin Gibson scores for Manchester United at the second attempt on a ground where they always seem to do well. Well played by Jim Beglin to Sammy Lee. And Sammy Lee was brought against the post. Johnny Walk. 1-1. The equaliser for Liverpool.
money. Both worries and demands is beginning to dominate the game in all divisions. Football chairmen believe wages have gone crazy. Although I got into the first team and played for England at 18, 19 or sorry, when I made my debut, I think I was on £200 a week for a good three years. My first wage was 350 quid. And I was like that. That'll do me. People might find it amazing as someone who went for over a million pounds in 79. Um, but I think the biggest wage packet I was on, I'd been on a basic wage at some time at Wolves of about £800 a week. I would have been in excess of £1,000 a week then, which, you know, it might not sound a lot now from what the footballers are getting now, but I promise you that was a lot of money then. I think when I left Liverpool, I was earning £100,000 a year. That was in 84. He's kidding you on. <laughs> To pick himself or not to pick himself? That's the question facing Kenny Dalglish as Liverpool try to close the gap at the top. And Alan Hansen's mood swings don't help. I think March time was 13 points behind. We went to dinner that night and I said to him, this is the worst Liverpool side I've ever played in. And he said, well, this, the team spirit is still good and if we can get a run, any sort of run at all, then I think we'll win something. I said, <laughs> you've got to be joking. There's no way this team will win anything. So, with that upbeat endorsement in his ears, Kenny's boys went to White Hart Lane to take on Spurs. And Grobola stretching and in! Glenn Hoddle's corner seemed to confuse Grobola completely and it finished up in the back of the net. That was Hansen heading down, Thomas miscued. And Rush played it back, and Whelan fired it, and it came to Morby, and that's the equaliser that Liverpool have been threatening to score. Oh, a misjudgment by Perryman, and here's Whelan. Rush is through the middle, danger here, and Rush, and a goal! They have done it! Kenny Dalglish thrilled to bits, and Ian Rush has scored a goal that keeps Kenny Dalglish's team the tabletop shows Everton still making steady progress. Three points clear of Manchester United, with Liverpool five points down on that. Membership schemes. The latest answer to the hooligan question. FA top brass are summoned to number 10 to hear Mrs Thatcher demand football fans carry identification cards. Such a scheme is going to cost a lot of money. We've had quotes of something like 30 million, which is quite beyond football. So we haven't thrown it out of the window, but we are looking at ways and means of implementing it in an attempt to eliminate this problem. Luton Town become the first club to belly up to the membership scheme, with club chairman Tory MP David Evans saying, yes, Prime Minister, no Prime Minister. What we're saying to football and to everyone is that here is an opportunity to rid the game of soccer hooliganism. The bullies, the louts, the cowards, they need to be identified, and at Luton, we have identified them. Everton are allowed into Luton to play the FA Cup sixth round. Chance for Harford! Mick Harford's got it! King, and Steen's through! Onside! What a chance for Luton! Still a chance for Luton, and Steen has done it! 2-0! Stevens with the kick for Everton. And it's a difficult one, and it's there! By Sharp! Graham Sharp has scored, and Everton are back in it. Lineker over the head against Foster Heath! It's there! Adrian Heath has equalised, the two-goal lead is wiped out, and Heath comes on as serve and does the trick again. Rescued by Adrian Heath, Everton won through to the semi-final in a replay. Also in the FA Cup, England skipper Brian Robson is sent off for violent conduct during Man United's fourth-round tie at Sunderland. But there's worse news to follow in a fifth-round tie at West Ham. For Manchester United captain Brian Robson is his right shoulder.
and it looks sadly as if Brian Robson will play no further part in this match. Mick Brown and Ron Atkinson show the anguish. Robson's dislocated shoulder is lousy news for England, who need their captain fit and well for Mexico. I asked him to take Brian Robson out of the Manchester United team and have an operation. And Ron felt, as the manager with Man United looking to win the championship, he couldn't do that. So, there's not much I could do. No Brian Robson then, but over 51,000 still come to Old Trafford for the Manchester derby. Good header by Gibson, Davenport. He was making his way into the middle. Davenport, penalty, yes! And a chance for them to go two up. Simpson, May, Phillips in the penalty area. Wilson was two, and Wilson scores! <laughs> McNabb, Wilson... ..and Simpson... ..and what a... the defender! Orbiston stepped across him, and the ball went in! In order to keep these shows moving, we rarely dwell on own goals, but this one is such a peach. He buries it like Johnny Method on a hot streak. What do you mean, who's Johnny Method? This is Johnny Method, Nottingham Forest's own cannon. Here on duty for his team at the city ground, entertaining West Ham. The big Dutch international gives himself a long run. Oh, and didn't he drive it well? And it went straight in. It seemed to go above Phil Park's head and in under the post. There are certain goals that have nothing to do with football. They're pure animal physics. This is one of them. Ward. High ball for Stewart to chase. Oh, good control by Ray Stewart. Cotty, lovely turn by Cotty! Oh, what a magnificent goal by Cotty! Stewart lifts his hands, he played the ball into the box, but what terrific skill again by Tony Cotty. Metwood. Johnny Method, he say, yes, yes, yes! Meanwhile, Everton's title hopes have taken a knock with the news of injuries to five first-team players, including star striker Gary Lineker and goalkeeper Neville Southall. The players prove they are still fit and healthy in some departments, though, as fullback Gary Stevens and the injured Neville give the kiss-and-tell tabloids acres and acres of good news days. With something of a siege mentality, the boys retire to the training ground, where the players remain on the straight and narrow with proper soul food and a little cereal, perhaps. Plus the odd waggish cry of crumpet all round. I believe that the players, they come in here and they work very, very hard and they play, and they play uh, to the best of their ability. That's all I can ask. People will have problems in their personal life and it's up to them to deal with it. Putting these Slee's allegations firmly behind them, the injured players can only look on as Everton face an FA Cup semi-final showdown against Sheffield Wednesday at Villa Park. It's Ratcliffe with the free kick. Nixon's header out, Bracewell. Put back in. Snowed in away from Harper. Back in by Mountfield. Now Harper is onside. And he's got the ball over the goalkeeper. And Alan Harper, the substitute, has scored for... Hart is there, Shelton's arriving away by Stevens as far as Snowden. Back in again, Hart and Chapman, Hart header, shot! Yes, the equaliser! Carl shot! Three minutes after going behind, Sheffield wins the 11. Bracewell. Sharp is hovering dangerously! Goal! What 
what a finish by Graham Sharp. Everton are back in the lead. Liverpool's League and Cup challenge is beginning to stir, largely thanks to the contribution of Ian Rush, who once again is proving to be something not quite of this world, a human goal machine, the perfectly created striker with a big nose. Alongside his now picked again partner, Kenny Dalglish, Liverpool dismiss Southampton in the FA Cup semi-final. Having secured a place in the first all Merseyside Cup final, Liverpool are desperate to close the gap on Everton as they face a massive game at Leicester. And Dalglish gets away with Rush going on the left. On the right, he's got Craig Johnson. This is Rush. Yes! The goal rush strikes again. Dalglish. Rush forward goes McDonald. Picked up here by Nickel. And Whelan coming forward. There it is. Number two. Coming from nowhere on the left. Leicester didn't spot him. On the same night, Everton visit relegation strugglers Oxford United. Both teams desperate for the three points. Lineker has got behind Shotton. Gary Lineker for Everton tried to lift it over Judge. The goalkeeper got close to the player of the year. Lineker! And here's Hamilton. Given time to set up Phillips. Gary Lineker, um, who had a great season for us individually in terms of goal scoring, had about three or four very, very good chances on the night. And not being critical of Gary because of his performance of that season, um, he didn't take them on the night. And Liverpool had that excellent win. So we knew it was taken out of our own hands. You know, if Liverpool went to Chelsea and won on the last game of the season, it doesn't matter what we did at Goodison, um, we'd have lost it. Bad news for Everton, but good news for West Ham, who was still in the championship hunt here at Watford. Devonshire. And still. Cotty arriving. Oh, it's a goal. Typical West Ham. 59 minutes. Tony Cotty. Alvin Martin. Oh, that's a good ball. McAvenny. Clean through. Round the goalkeeper. Frank McAvenny. 2 0. Thoroughly well deserved. McAvenny confirms the three points for West Ham and maintains their championship momentum. On the final Saturday of the season, the championship was wide open. With two games left, West Ham and Everton must win and hope for Liverpool to slip up at Chelsea in their final game of the season. West Ham's outrageous confidence was reflected in their performance at West Brom, where the old combination of Cotty and McAvenny did the job again. McAvenny! Yes! What a star for West Ham! Devonshire to Dickens. Finds McAvenny, who finds Cotty. Surely this is number two. It is! Another perfect bit of football by West Ham. However, it was Gary Lineker who ended the season as the First Division's top scorer and player of the year. You won't get any argument from Southampton about that. Lineker. Goal number 35 of the season. Bracewell. And still, uh, Lineker. But well, he didn't hit it quite truly. But he doesn't care and neither do the crowd. 
by Heath. Yes, at six. And that's Lineker's hat trick. Despite Everton's win, it was still Liverpool's title to win or lose. Victory at Chelsea, and the trophy was on their coach. What a climax to the league season. Liverpool looking for their eighth championship in the last 11 years and needing just one goal to take their league total to 89, which would be the highest first division aggregate for 18 years. Gillespie, Beglin again. Whelan. And Dalglish is in here. scores the goal that may edge Liverpool nearer to their 16th championship. The fans celebrate, and Jim Beglin's presence in the Liverpool attack was so important. He had the earlier shot, he stayed forward, and when Dalglish got free, that was an unerring finish. And Liverpool Football Club have won the first division title for the 16th time in Kenny Dalglish's first season as player manager what an achievement the fans celebrate the eighth championship in 11 seasons and the Liverpool players every right to congratulate each other I can't remember a player manager ever winning the first division championship before and the players are delighted for him too Looking back, that was probably one of the best ones of the championships at my eight because at no stage until quarter to five on the Saturday that we played Chelsea did I think we'd win that championship. Other championships, you thought, well, we're going to win this. Just keep going, we'll win it. But there was no way we were ever going to win that championship. And yet, somehow we came through and won it. They're all looking forward to the cup final on Saturday and everybody's thinking now obviously about the double. Well, the only team has got a chance of doing it, aren't they? You all do it me life. The hunt is on for cup final tickets, with the whole of Liverpool wanting to occupy a little bit of Wembley. Do you think you'll be able to get a ticket? I don't know, but we're going to you know, celebrate, celebrate the night time if you win. Are you going to go to the cup final? Yeah, with or without a ticket. Any price was paid. £50, £100, this woman's dignity. Safe to say that more than the official 100,000 probably witnessed the game. Although, for a variety of reasons, not everyone showed up on the computer. And it wasn't only old-fashioned bunking in that swelled the gate. You've heard about um, forged tickets. I think you heard about it there, and you certainly saw it in your morning papers as well. I've got a real ticket here. It's already accounted for, so don't phone in, um, I'm afraid. That's the, that's the top one here. Um, and the bottom one is the forgery. I don't know if you can pick up. It's got a, more of a sort of yellowy hue. Um, it says it's, forgery on the front. It's, <laughs> 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 That's right. We wrote that on just now, Terry. It says That's special. What gives it away. <laughs> the manager of the year, 1985, on the far side. The manager of the year, 1986, on the near side. to Dalglish. Now Reid. Lineker off through the centre again. This is promising. Lineker for Everton. Saved by Gobbala. Lineker. 1-0 to Everton. And who else but Gary Lineker? His 40th goal of the season for Everton. The footballer of the year. Here's Whelan, Mulby, and here's Rush, onside, Ian Rush, goal! The referee 
was knocked over in the excitement, but Ian Rush has equalised for Liverpool. Here's Rush. Dalglish is up, so is Mulby here. Dalglish, no Johnston, yes! 2-1 to Liverpool! Craig Johnston! What a turnaround! Chipped in towards Lineker, Jim Beglin with the header. This is Whelan. That's Johnston. This is Rush. Mulby again. Oh, I say, his vision there was lovely. Whelan. And Rush is on the far side. Is this three? It is! Ian Rush again. And surely now, the double is about to be won. The Reds in total triumph. Having run himself into the ground for 90 minutes, the last thing Alan Hansen wanted was a long congratulation speech from Princess Michael of Kent. Birch is a tough old girl and wanted her moment in the sun too. Just let me have it, Mum. Just let me have it, Mum. Just let me have it, Mum. Thank you. Liverpool have won the double. The double? What is the double? If you look back in, in the 80s, was the double better in 83-84 when the European Cup, the Championship and the League Cup? Maybe not. I don't think it is. After nine months of the season, both the agony and the ecstasy locked within one city, and the Liverpool and Everton players had to lift themselves for the World Cup finals in Mexico. Everyone is in very good shape. Everybody's got a touch of World Cup fever, I'm sure, like me. So we're ready to go. Mexico welcomed the world, and the dreaded Mexican wave was born. Lest we forget, the Scots were present and in reasonable voice. Not forgetting the Northern Irish, matching the jock's boozy note for boozy note. And Jerry Armstrong bet fearless Norman Whiteside he couldn't wrestle one of those famous Mexican Labradors. The only worry for the nation with the three lab three lions on its chest were the injuries to Brian Robson and Gary Lineker. Robson was patched up with a full shoulder brace and took his place in the first group match against Portugal. Diamantino. Carlos Manuel is in the centre. Diamantino. Carlos Manuel! Portugal have scored number six, Carlos Manuel. The shock defeat by unfancied Portugal cast a shadow over the England camp. Whilst Bobby Robson pondered his team options, the local papers were really laying into the English supporters. We're not animals. The Mexicans are good. We're all good and we're having a really good time. Can you ask anybody? The only people to let us down with a team. In an act of do or die, Bobby Robson sent his captain into battle against surprise qualifiers Morocco. Hately, good header. Robson battling for it, and has fallen a little awkwardly. Inevitably, it happened, and our best player was out. England hit bottom. No, hang on. Now they've hit bottom. And a red card has been shown to Ray Wilkins. Disaster upon disaster for England. It was quite hot down there at the time, in Monterey, and I just lost it. Uh, I didn't actually throw it at him, I threw it to the floor, but unfortunately it bounced up and hit him on the leg, which he took, uh, well, in no uncertain terms, he just drew the card out and, and I was off. Meanwhile, Scotland had made an equally poor start, losing to Denmark in the so-called Group of Death. 
So what do you do when you're depressed and south of the border? Why, give it plenty of big hat and bandito posing, of course. Gordon Strachan goes where 10 million tourists have gone before, all to get in the right frame of mind for West Germany. And Goff and Aitken and Strachan. Taken the lead, oh. Gordon Strachan. Margaret. Still Felix Margaret. And this is Alos. And the back heel finds Litbarski on the edge of the area. And they've got Alos in on the blue ball. And Fuller. And West Germany have equalised. Rudy Fuller. And Fuller is a handful. He's pulling away from Neri every time, or trying to, and Neri's sticking to him. And Alos! And a goal! Oh, dear me, Scotland were caught in defence. Afterwards, defeated and dehydrated, Nickel and Souness couldn't oblige with a random sample. Altogether now, nobody could take the piss out of them. It's a problem because after the game, because of the heat, you dehydrate and you, you can't pee. It's as simple as that. Scotland's last opponents were Uruguay, who needed just a point, and they were going to get it. And there is a first indication of how the Uruguayans might be approaching this as Batista brings down Gordon Strachan, and there is a red card. He's off. Oh, what a start. Batista is off. In one of the World Cup's ugliest games, it finished nil-nil, and that wasn't enough for Scotland. They were literally kicked out. The reaction from Scots fans was swift and shocking. I'll tell you right now, I hate England. And see if England get, get to play Uruguay. I'll support England against Uruguay. There you go. And that's how much I hate Uruguay. On his 41st birthday and after a world record 119 caps, Pat Jennings said goodbye to the international scene just as Northern Ireland was signing off from the World Cup finals. Brazil and their debutant right back Yosimar just too good. Kareka and Casagrande are waiting for a cross, and Josimar! Oh, what a goal! And he scores on his first appearance! Zico, Kareka, Zico, can he get Kareka right back? Oh, I say! And Northern Ireland go out, but in great style on Pat Jennings' part. It was now the last chance for England, too. Bobby Robson trying to lift team morale for a crucial game against Poland. It was win or bust. On the first goal, Barry Davies keeps his call. Cool. Not like Jimmy Hill, just behind him. Four in the area. Linda! Coming in on it. Oh! Yes! Oh! Magnificent goal! We're not here, closing it, and Lineker says thank you very much. Quite a celebration going on around the ground. One or two England supporters are doing, are doing the conga. Lineker's hat trick sent the English fans crazy go nuts. Now they and the England team were heading for the second stage against Paraguay. Gary Lineker just hungry to get on with it. Indeed, in a quarter-final against Argentina. Recently beaten in the Falklands War, they were now led on the pitch by the armour-plated pocket battleship Diego Maradona. Full of political intrigue, the game was a tense affair, but then this. Maradona just walked away from Hoddle then. Maradona, Hoddle and Maradona! And Maradona gives Argentina the lead. The England players protesting to the referee. 
I was just waiting for the river to say, no, sorry, handball, let's play. And then I realised, hey, this guy isn't going he isn't to do this. He's, he's not going to do this decision. And I looked over at the linesman and he was had his flag down and he's run towards the halfway line. And suddenly, it's, and my stomach is actually turning. I suddenly realised, this guy's not going to give us a handball. This is gonna, he's going to give a goal. It is the strangest decision you'll ever see in football in a World Cup, in such a big game. Uh, one that I don't think we'll see ever again, uh, quite frankly. And uh, one that leaves you with a massive feeling in you, in, in, inside you as an injustice, you know? It was a horrible feeling. And so says the whole of Scotland, of course. What happened next only made things worse, as Maradona toyed with the English defence. He has Borchaga to his left and Valdano to his left. He doesn't. He won't need any of them. Oh, you have to say that's magnificent. There is no debate about that goal. That was just pure football genius. Inside one, away from another. And the coolness under pressure to play the ball home with the side of his foot. With time running out, England threw on John Barnes and threw everybody forward. This is John Barnes. That's nicely done. That's a good cross to Kyrgyz Minikow! Nine minutes left. And English hopes are rekindled. Yeah, but too late for miracles. Or was it? And every Englishman surely will be saying, go on, run at them. It's a good cross. Yes, no! Lineker just could not get to it. Centimetres away. I feel sick. England, we're out of the World Cup. The inquest could begin. I felt very sorry for the players when it all came to an end. I thought we deserved a bit more. A bit angry with Maradona, a bit angry with the referee. He, he, you know, he said it was the hand of God, and I said it was the hand of a rascal. Argentina went on and won it. And call him what you will, and he's been called plenty, it was Maradona's World Cup Finals. Unbelievable! The world's greatest player receives the world's most important football prize. And that is just about it from our little summer burst of the great game. I trust it helped you through some of these difficult matchless weeks. The football season is upon us once again. It won't be long till we're all biting our nails and cursing those we love most and vowing never to go near that ground again. Don't you just love it? And by the way, if anyone ever says to you there's too much football on television, you look them straight in the eye and say, my friend, there simply isn't enough. Drives them mad. See ya. We're on our way together And we'll stay friends forever Next night on BBC One, Fleetwood Mac on the making of their classic album, always Rumours, family. in a moment. That's how we'll always be Thinking of the ones we left behind We'll miss our country Would you have owned up if you'd, against Argentina, if you'd put the hand in and put the cup, would you, as a true British sportsman, have owned up to that? No. 